This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, Revenge of the Nerds is celebrating 35 years, you know, and uh, I've had uh, Michelle Mayrink on here before. Well, we're going to highlight that film with a lovely, beautiful cheerleader we have on the phone with us, the lovely, the beautiful, the gorgeous, and talented Julia Montgomery. How do you, how you do, Julia? Wow, what an intro. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Just out of curiosity, uh, um, was your husband a nerd? You know what? He actually, he actually is a bit of a nerd. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Although I don't know that he knows it. I was just wondering whether the movie had influenced your, your dating life after you know after it was done wrapping. <laughs> well, I. Guess think nerds are a good way to go, i got to say, you know, especially, if, you know, the because they're a little more well-rounded say, than the average average dude, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or the average jock, I should say. There you go. <laughs> yeah, what's it like right now in California? Is it nice there right now? Oh, it is a perfect, perfect day. It, it really is. Uh, we've had a bunch of different weather and you know, things going on out here with the fires and all that but today is like the ultimate california day it's just perfectly sunny and gorgeous yes well uh here in new brunswick we're waiting for the snow to melt and uh we've oh. got some nice weather here have you ever been out in new brunswick before new brunswick canada no it sounds gorgeous though yeah we're, we're four out we're four hours ahead of you wow yeah, we're an hour ahead of uh, Toronto and New York, so. Well, it's definitely like cocktail hour there. <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> Fun. Fun. Well, what do you think about the fact that Revenge of the Nerds is celebrating 35 years? Like, <laughs> I remember when that came oh, out. That is so, I can't, it's weird. I can't believe that it's been 35 years. And I can't believe that that, that is, I mean, I can believe it now because I've seen the revolution of what has happened with this movie, but it's, it's crazy to think that, you know, we're still talking about and enjoying this movie 35 years later. I'm, I'm quite pleased. I'm really. <laughs> yep. I think it's great. I think it's great. You know, when we, when we, when we made the movie, um, we started from a very, very basic little script, very minimal, not a lot of, not a lot of anything written, much written in for the actors. And through the process, we just, we, we added each of us so much uh, to the script. It, it ended up just, and with the help of our wonderful director, Jeff Canoe, who's so much fun and was so so crazy fun to work with um he, he he's amazing we we just we ended up with a really like heartfelt comedy that that kind of touched so many people i mean i it's it's unbelievable to think how many people over the years guys especially i mean they so you can take this a couple of ways but they're like you changed my life but some of them really meant it in a like a sincere like more you know revo not, not revolutionary like like um just it really changed their life versus oh my god you know you were you know my my i don't know physical dream or whatever you know fantasy or something <laughs> they didn't all just they didn't all just mean that they just meant you know being accepted being being a nerd and and and, and getting the girl that supposedly you'd never attain just because you don't you don't look as you're not as gorgeous as the Ted McKinley is, <laughs> but you've got all the right, you know, charm and skills and smarts. So, so it's just been. I just really loved making that movie, and I think it it stands out because it has so much heart, and people can really relate to it inside inside themselves. So that's that's where I think it's you know continued on like this. 
Yeah, I, I have Michelle Mayrink on here, and I could not convince her to do the nerd laugh. Are you going to do the nerd laugh for us? Oh, I don't think I do this. <laughs> only only Robert does the nerd laugh. <laughs> yeah, but you know, now we get the Me Too movement and equality, so we have to have women do the nerd laugh too. You got to be inclusive. Oh my God! <laughs> no, see, I do the I do the nerd the nerd chant, which is nerd nerd. Nerds, nerds, you know, and just goes on and on and on forever. I don't do the, uh, I can't do Lewis's laugh. I mean, that was, that was a laugh that was developed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Michelle couldn't do it either. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even try, but it, it's like, uh, 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 you know? <laughs> there you go, there you go. You got, you got a little bit of it in there. <laughs> I got part of it, but it sounds more like I'm dying rather than laughing. So, uh, you know, I think we need, we need Robert to, uh, we have Bobby to kick in on that, or, or <laughs> maybe one of like one of the nerds. You mentioned um, you mentioned Ted McGinley, of course, who was the big jock. I see this movie and I laugh at him because the first time I seen him was in Married with Children, where his jock days were long past him. <laughs> he was. Just... <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, he's such a gorgeous guy, and he's so not. He's not who Dan was at all. Which is really funny, um, but he he is so uh, drop dead gorgeous, and we're actually doing an event together in um, in Niagara Falls in Canada. Um, uh, this coming when is it? It's June. I think it's seventh, eighth, and ninth. It's the Comic Con in Ni- Niagara Falls, so we'll be there together, and uh, that'll be fun because it's been a long time since I've been to Canada. I've only been to Vancouver. I shot a mini series there way back, mm-hmm. and um, and it was beautiful. But I've never been to Niagara Falls. I haven't been to any other parts of Canada, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, do you think Mercy Darcy is going to let him go to Canada? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Right, there could be an issue. I may have to. I may have to, you know, fly in and get him myself. <laughs> I like Ted McGinley. Like, uh, like I said, I see him as a jock in this movie, and I'm like, he's like Al Bundy. Al Bundy was the football player, and then now he's just sitting on the couch, his best yeah. days behind. Yeah. <laughs> That's Ted McGinley going from Revenge of the Nerds to Married with Children. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so funny. Yeah. No, uh, I've lived in New Brunswick here my whole life, and it wasn't until I've been doing this podcast since 2015. And uh, wow. what had happened was uh, a Canadian actress I interviewed, Lisa Langwa, invited me to uh, Horrorama in Toronto, and she asked me to be her assistant. And I couldn't turn oh. that down. It was my first oh. time venturing out. <laughs> yeah, that sounds tremendous. Yep, and I'm still in touch with her, still good friends with her, and uh, I've been to uh, Toronto twice since, at two Horrorama events and one Comic-Con in Toronto, and uh, always connect with Lisa when I'm there, and um, and looking forward to the next Horrorama this fall. Um, oh. Yep, but uh, yeah, like they get, they get to do it... Uh, some nerd conventions since and I've even said this to Michelle Mayrink because uh, um, she's kind of stepped out of the spotlight but I said to her I said you, you gotta yeah. get into some of these conventions because people love to hear about you I I would love to talk to Michelle I love Michelle I'm impressed that you you were able to find her what, how did you do that how did you find her no one she has definitely stepped out for mm-hmm. such a long time yeah, she she life. was on uh, Facebook, and then we connected the. Uh, really? Did a, yeah, we did further. Um, I don't have her on Facebook, but that's where I messaged her, and then we did our business through email. I think so. Uh, yeah. Wow, I'm mm-hmm. gonna have to try to. So you searched for her on Facebook, mm-hmm. or you? Okay, I'm gonna try to do that. I really adored her. She and she's such a good actress. What is she doing now? I believe she's, uh, um, I might get this wrong, but I think uh, teaching acting or something like that in Vancouver. Oh. Yeah. In Vancouver? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. She's, she was so much fun, and I thought she was just, 
unbelievably fabulous in the movie. I just, I wish that she had, you know, been on on of our all of our you know public appearances and these autograph signings and stuff because she, she she was always shy. She, I'm not surprised that she didn't, you know, want to do this kind of stuff. She was never reachable. Um, I didn't try to reach her, but. I would have loved to have, I mean, I, you know, just seen her, um, whether or not she wanted to do the conventions, uh, you know, but just to, just to reconnect with her. Uh, she's, uh, she's always, she's, I just really like her. <laughs> well, they were so funny together. She and, she and Anthony Edwards were so wonderful together to watch them. Oh, it was delightful. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll send her an email and I'll ask her if it's okay with her if I give you her yeah. email. Yeah, if I'm. If you would, that'd be great. Just tell her I want to say hi and I just, I always think of her all the time. I mean, I just, you know, I miss, I miss her. I mean, you know, she's just, she's, uh, yeah, if you would do that, that'd mean, that'd mean a lot. That'd mean a lot to me. That'd be great. I'll do that. I'll do that. Yep. But, Thank uh, you. Yeah, 35 years and boy, nerds. It's funny because John Goodman and James Cromwell are in this movie. James Cromwell went on to <laughs> win an Academy right. Award. Exactly. Well, he was always just as talented as he was as he, as he was then. He's just a brilliant, he's just a brilliant guy and uh and as nice as you can be. And and um John Goodman is priceless and and such a sweetheart we hung out a lot together um during the shoot and then a little bit afterwards when i i was living in la when we when i got the job but i would go back to new york and visit because that's where i had started my career and uh had a lot of friends there and at that time my parents lived on the east coast but uh i would um I would see John Goodman then as well, and, you know, we had some really, really great times. Yes. Well, James Cromwell, now, can you imagine if he played the nerd character in L.A. Confidential? <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be great. That, that, that's, that's a great idea. <laughs> and, of course, John yeah. Goodman, and pretty much now famous for The Big Lebowski. <laughs> Yeah, I mean his his talent is endless. Honestly, he's yeah, he's uh, he's a terrific guy. He's so he's he's such such a sweetheart. He really is. He's a deep guy. Mm -hmm. He's he's funny, but he's also really deep. And you don't always you know you don't always know that right at the get go. But he's he's a, he's a, he's a good guy. Well, we got to talk about some of the fellow nerds, like Robert Carradine and Anthony Edwards, of course, the nerds that are trekking to the campus and uh, carrying that big, big trunk across, you know, and getting in everybody's way and and don't realize that they're the nerds being jeered at. And, of course, especially Robert Carradine, like, I mean, he's... you look at the word nerd in the dictionary, you got you, you obviously got to see his picture, you know? <laughs> Right. Wait, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay. I thought you said, oh, like you had lost me. So, so, so yeah. So, there we were with with those uh, with those guys watching that, the trunk and then go on. I, I, I couldn't hear you for a second. Yeah. That, that was a great opening to the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was so funny. Uh, just, just amazing. You know, the, the, it just already you had such such the story right there, and from the car from actually from the car scene from the laugh that's when that's when you know that's Jamie and Robert who created that laugh, and um, I think Jamie egged, egged Robert on to make it you know more you know to really do it do it big and make that his like signature. <laughs> yep. So. Um, yeah, but that was just such a classic moment when they're when they're lugging all that stuff over, and uh, it's just so so funny, so funny to 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 watch that being filmed, and you know, it just it just all crack us up. <laughs> I know there's a little bit of controversy today. I noticed online over the um, 
where your character is in this fun house and uh, you think it's Ted McGinley and it's the nerd. And I guess there's a little bit of controversy over that now because, uh, oh, definitely. yeah, because now I don't think a woman would accept that. <laughs> right. I, I think I would have had to like, uh, you know, really, yeah, kill him with my cowboy boots or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that definitely um, is so funny. I like to, I, you know, that's a scene that definitely did not, we did not get rehearsed a lot. And I think that, um, well, there's a couple of things. I mean, for my character, I feel like because Betty was so, it was so initially repelling to her, Lewis, and, and you know, his, like, how could this nerd be approaching her? Like, why would he even have the right? And all that kind of horrible, you know, thoughts that she, you know, the, the, the world that she was living in, um, you know, her boyfriend had to be the head of the football team and had to look, be as gorgeous as Ted McGinley. And, but look how horribly Ted treated her. And yeah. so I think over time, as, as Lewis kept on coming back and back and trying to be charming and funny, and he was funny, and he was sort of charming, but he was a nerd. So Betty was, like, being worn away slowly by Lewis and his 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 charms, you know, and his sort of, you know, the way he looked at her, the way he... The way he looked at her in a in a in a meaningful way, like in a like like he really wanted to get to know her. <laughs> yeah. So by the time we get to the moon bounce, and you know, right before it, you see Ted, uh, not Ted, Dan. You know, say to you know, I say I'm horny or whatever, and he's like, "You're just like a goat." I mean, my God, what? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, who? You know. That wasn't great, you know. He wasn't the best boyfriend. No. Nope. Kind of, so then, I think for Betty, when then that happened, it was sort of like you just see her kind of so taken off guard. And, I mean, they just had this, you know, obviously sexual intimate experience where she was in the library and I remember thinking, oh, my God, you know, what happened? Where did he get? What what happened to Ted that he was? <laughs> guess he's still, you know. So, I think that's why, that's why, that scene went that way. And I had a lot of faith in Jeff Canoe. Uh, he did never. We never added a beat that maybe should have been there, where you know Betty would be like aghast. But I don't know exactly how it would have gone from there. Um, we we maybe should have played it out, but it Jeff didn't direct us in that that mm -hmm. way, and so I definitely get what everyone's talking about. You know, it would definitely be, you know, the R word for sure. Um, yeah. But I think, it, for, as far as Betty's point of view at that time, it was just that that Lewis had been kind of working on her slowly with endurance and forever mm -hmm. and it was like she just kind of melted instead of you know it was the opposite it was the opposite of what you know i understand why people look at it that way and i i wouldn't i wouldn't disagree i i just um don't think that's where betty was at i mean if you can if you the contrast between the way ted or stan treated her and then lewis is like yeah, almost being uh, practically being abused from by by Stan the way he the way he treated her you know most of the time almost all the time you know he was he was upset when I broke up with him but it was like he was shocked more than anything I don't know how yeah he was deeply upset I don't know <laughs> I don't know but anyway so I think Betty was sort of really touched and relieved but I don't think there's any way that you could get around the controversy that that scene is has brought up yeah. now. Well, you another know. thing that too, like um, the pie plate scene, <laughs> what were your feelings on that and how was that set up? Well, that was set up contractually where there was like 
it was like a two seconds. I forget what it was in the contract. Two and a half seconds of of nudity, so that it was like supposed to be really brief between that and the the shower, you know, the shower scene. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was an '80s movie. My parents weren't happy about it. I can tell you that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, they sprayed uh, whipped cream over your naked picture on the, the pie yeah. plates, and people were licking it off. And and I'm yeah. wondering what your thoughts were over this, and especially well, at that time. Listen, I was thrilled to be seen as the you know the uh, iconic girl and the, the prize in the movie. You know, this the, the the supposedly kind of you know unreachable goal of Betty Child, you know, so I mean, I myself was like, wait, let me move inside again, there's some people out, there's some people over here, um, you know, I was, hold on, because the reception may break up for me, hold on one second. Okay. Um, I was, I was like, so flattered, honestly, to be that, that I was the one who was, you know, this idolized girl. <laughs> that, um, you know, and this whole high plate stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's a prank and, you know, and all of this. And, um, let's see, where were we? The pie plate. <laughs> the pie plate. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to air this or show this anywhere that my dad <laughs> could, could see. I mean, he won't, he won't know. He won't know. No. We're talking about the pie plate. He'd be like, oh, my God. Terrible. Um, yeah, what was I to do? Well, the thing is, is I, you know, of course, my character didn't really know there was a pie plate. So I no. just immediately in Montgomery just went along with that. I'm just like, I don't even know that it exists because it was, you know, a secret camera or whatever. <laughs> it kind of makes Lewis look a lot more guilty, though, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. He, he's, not, he's not perfect. He still is like a frat boy, and they, they still did not a frat boy. We all know a frat boy. You know, a nerdy frat boy, and they still did some bad things. Mm, yeah, <laughs> they still did some college, college prank bad things. Yeah, so I just, you know, I I don't know what to say. He just he he still has some growing up to do, but like, he's still a still a guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Curtis Armstrong, yeah. of course, was in this uh, as Booger, and he just came off risky business. So talk about having yeah. two hits in a row. What were your memories of him? Well, we were, we, were, we were so tight on the set. Everyone, you know, we were like, we we were we became, you know, really really incredible friends on that show, and spent every waking moment together. Which there were a lot of waking moments because it was the '80s, so we really didn't sleep that much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so we would just uh, he's he's an amazing guy, uh, and. Um, you know, massively talented. Um, I, I don't think that he, 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 I don't think anyone knew at the time that even though we wanted to make the most out of Revenge of the Earth, I don't think anyone thought it would, knew, it, they would, no one knew. It wasn't like we were being backed by a, a studio that was so excited. They all, they told us early on that they were, they might, they were about to shut us down and we, we were all like, you know, we were trying to get even more creative. So, so I don't think that anyone necessarily thought it was going to be a, a hit the way it was or, or become a, you know, a, a pop culture classic by any means at that moment. It it was just something that 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 got into people's souls and, and never left. And, and that's why I think it has legs. I mean, you go to our, our, our events and they're, they're sold out. You know, we have these... Um, nerd parties and they're completely sold out and we you know we we it's just i don't know people just have such a fondness for for the movie and the message there um but uh anyway yeah curtis and i have always been very tight we've remained good friends really good friends through the years as as i have through the rest of the rest of the cast um of that movie it's, it's very unusual really that that you have the kind of relationship from, from a movie um, or a TV show where 
there are no issues on the set as far as personality problems or um, things like that, you know. Um, the only personality problem we had a little bit was the fact that Curtis and I were, were extremely tight, and Robert uh, Carradine, Bobby, mm-hmm. he, 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 he sort of was kind of like a bit of a method actor, and he, so he was always kind of a character, and he thought that even though in real life his girlfriend up there with him at during the shoot, that he should uh, that he should sort of have all of my attention as well, even though it was, you know, he was in a relationship. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was that was the only issue where there was like kind of a a funny a funny uh, jealousy between Robert and. From Robert to Curtis, and because Curtis and I were so uh, exclusively together and all that stuff, um, but it wasn't an issue when it came to performance or any of that. It was just sort of a little bit of backstory that of stuff that we went through. Like Curtis wasn't allowed on the set when when Robert and I had a scene and stuff like that. And you know, it was one night. It was it was we were doing night shoots and it was really cold and and uh, you know Curtis. I, I think he gave me his risky business jacket to um, to wear onto the set, and and um, he had just learned that he couldn't come on the set to watch watch him do my scene. He just said, "Why not?" And the AD is like, "You just you just can't come. You can't come." And so then when I came in in the jacket, apparently I don't know what what Bobby had said to uh, either Jeff Canoe or maybe an AD, but. Like the jacket had to go. It was like, it was like wow. You no, know, he wanted me to be his in his mind and in his, you know, you know, just that's what he needed. That's what he, and you know, he Bobby was used to um, having a lot of great girlfriends that he met on his movies too. But he had a girlfriend. It really didn't make sense to me. No. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, so that was, but that really didn't. That, Robert and I always had great chemistry. Um, we just natural chemistry together on screen, and so we didn't have any issue doing our scenes together. It was just like a side, a side, you know, side track that that he did like want Curtis around on the set when he and when Robert and I were doing a scene together. It was just like it was sort of sweet in a way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, but other than that, and, uh, you know, like I said, it wasn't it, it wasn't an issue in real life. It was just a, an issue for him. It, it, I guess it interrupted his, his focus when we were having our scenes together. So so that it wasn't like uh, anything detrimental to the movie. It was really it was really for the movie in his mind, you know, and that 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 was not the, the world. But it, we, and all of us, Bobby and I are completely tight from you know for years and and we all you know have dinner together all the time and when we, when we go to these events we're just really in seventh heaven to be together and goof around and you know you know stay out late and and uh, you know without the without the extra 80s drugs that we had then we just still have the same friendship for better so it's kind of like oh this is amazing you know well, Hello. we've got to talk about Donald Gibb, who was uh, ogre. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, it's like he's a great, I just great guy. He's his grandfather. He's his father again. And he's a grandfather. <laughs> he's so and he's such a crazy, funny guy. He's he's. Uh, we've done a lot of these comic hunts together in the last couple of years, and. Um, He's the sweetest. He's the absolute opposite of what he looks like. Um, <laughs> but, you know, back back in those days when we were shooting the movie, I it, it, I think a lot of a lot of the guy you know the male actors were getting a lot of action in town, and I I know that he was probably part of that. Um, but um, you know why why shouldn't they? They're they're you know we were all I mean I you know I, I wasn't walking around town looking for action, but. But the guys, you know, these are young guys. These are like guys, you know, just out of college, kind of aged guys. <laughs> <laughs> so they were making the most of the moment, I think. And, and he was definitely a part of that. Uh, just, just about all, just about all the guys were. <laughs> you know, I think. So, but uh, yeah, he's a sweetheart. You'd never, you, we think of him as a teddy bear. So it's, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, 
he's just a, he's just a, a real sweetheart. Yes, and then there's uh, Andrew Casse, or as yeah, Worm. He's, yeah, as Worms or um, Worms or <laughs> Worms or he actually has a hotel room next to mine, so I could have no parties in my room because you know he was like eight or something or seven at best. <laughs> Such a cute little guy, and to now be be at these conventions with him and stuff is so funny. Because I, I just look at him, I go, "I got your girl." It's like me. <laughs> <laughs> How did that, that happen? So that was really funny. Yeah, we did, we just try to protect him a bit from from you know some of the craziness of those days. <laughs> yeah, and of course Larry B. Scott and <laughs> Larry B. He's so fun. Yeah, he's he's a great guy. He's, he definitely, he definitely, the problem he made, he, he was, his thing was he always had to announce that he wasn't gay because he wanted, he wanted the girls to know <laughs> not gay. <laughs> like, yeah. help me in. <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah, he's wonderful. Well, 35 years of Revenge of the Nerds, and of course, that's not your only comedy to be celebrating 35 years. You did Up <laughs> the Creek the same year. Oh, that's true. That was true. I did that. Oh my god. Yeah. Fun movie to make, and it was. Uh, I don't know. That was. A, that was a. Just not. It's not an interesting movie to watch. But we, we had so much fun up in Oregon shooting that on the river, and uh, that was crazy. That was my first movie in California, and and I was like, wow, is this what it's like to go on location? This is crazy. <laughs> So that was a, that was a mere warm up to to uh, to then winning the part on uh, and nerds and and going to Tucson and really having the time of my life with that group with that group of people like nerds cast was you know way we were always super tight and and the, the other cast was was good but it wasn't it wasn't at all but there's no other cast to prevent the nerds honestly as far as friendships and. You know stuff like that, but but it was fun. It was fun doing up the creek. I loved loved shooting it. Um, but you know they always underwrite the girls' roles, so that was that was sort of the norm. But uh, but uh, it's still really fun to make. Yeah, it was great. My favorite um, role in Up the Creek was, uh, of course, Blaine Novak. I thought he. Oh yeah, <laughs> a wild man. He's a wild man. Yeah. I know he's around somewhere. We, I ran into somebody um, from that cast. Oh, it was Jeff East, um, and we were going to have a reunion, but I haven't heard anything about it yet. Um, but just um, yeah, Blaine, Blaine, cra- crazy Blaine, crazy wild Blaine. A lot of fun. But, but he, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. everything he did. Like it was like military and everything backfired. And I love that scene where they're on the ground and he's like ordering his uh, troops. And I think it says uh, Jesse B. Goins friggin' lifts his hand up barely and just managed to extend a middle finger like this is enough. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, those there were some really funny moments in that with those guys. Uh, yeah, that was entertaining. That was definitely entertaining. Uh, yeah, that was my favorite part of the movie was everything that Blaine did because everything just bl- it was so Looney Tunes. Yes, it was. That's a very good way to put it. Yeah, because it was fun that way. It was was Looney Tunes. Yeah, I like that. Well, John Belushi had passed away just two years prior to this, and of course, National Lampoon's wow. Animal House was a major hit. Yeah. And, um, of course, uh, Up the Creek had Tim Madison and Stephen First, both from Animal House. And um, wow. Stephen First, and sadly, is uh, no longer with us either. But um, When did that happen? I... Yeah, I think it was a couple of years ago now, Stephen oh. First had passed away. And I was working on getting oh. him on my show. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's sad. Yeah, he he was fun. He was a really fun guy to work with. Uh, just jovial and everything you would think he would be. That, you know, just straight, straight, exactly. Just, just the kind of personality you think. Just sweet and a lot of fun. Yeah, Tim Madison, kind of almost plain otter from uh, Animal House, and of course Tim's got a lot of uh, 
uh, sarcasm to his role. So, um, yes. he, him playing the he lead. Great. Yeah. Yeah, he, he Madison is, uh, I always enjoyed watching him. He's got a lot of charisma and, um, you know, I'm not sure, I think I, seen him is he is he still doing work as an actor is he i think so cool? yeah 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 i need to, i've always enjoyed looking i have to look him up and see who his last project are because he's he's a very talented guy and of course john hillerman in this too talk about a veteran <laughs> yes exactly yes no one a magnum and also he wasn't in big scenes um um yeah, he's a fantastic actor. Yep, and you, of course, were amongst the girls. You were in there with uh, Jennifer Runyon and uh, exactly. Gianna Kios and. Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the best friend of the lead. It was like crazy. It was crazy. That 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 movie was. There was a lot of partying going on that set. Movie. <laughs> yeah, what was it like working with them? Well, I became good friends for a while during that movie. Um, let's see. I was. I remember being very upset that I got to make have a choice of roles, and there really wasn't much difference in the roles, except for I had this scene. I was able to choose the. the uh, Jennifer Harding character. I had one scene with her where we were like, you know, girlfriends talking. Mm-hmm. And the uh, issue, issue where the producer was doing a favor to the actress, if I blocked out, who played the other girl. Did you see it was the same thing or whatever her name was? The Playboy Bunny girl. Uh, okay. The, the three. The, the girl with a like incredible body, so they like I, you know, all of a sudden, literally, we were about to shoot the scene, or we were ready to shoot the scene, and I'm like, "Wait, bitch, seen her without even telling me." And I said, "That's the But anyway, so that was a really upsetting. That was such a Hollywood moment. It was like, "What do you mean, my why? Well, how did you?" I said. Thinking, I was, I was talking to Lou Arkoff, the director, mm-hmm. son of the producer, obviously, which is, I'm sure how he got the job. It's really, you know, not, not, not someone with a lot of experience directing. Yep. <laughs> but, but anyway, you know, it was just a favor. It was one of those things. Whoever got the, the, uh, that girl, the girl on the, I figured out, can you believe it? I completely blacked out on her name. Um, that's how upset I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this can't happen. I ha- I chose that role. I wanted that monologue. But, you know, this is what, you know, it was like, but anyway, they love me. That's, that's, uh, that's Tinsel Town. That's <laughs> how it works. <laughs> Sometimes. It's never happened again, but it definitely happened on that movie, and I'll never forget it. No. And, uh, <laughs> Yes, and uh, do the fact we're blacking out there. Um, what role was this that you going up? Was it Jennifer Runyon's? No, not Jennifer Runyon's. It was. Oh, I was. Oh, they had. They said to me, "You get your choice of any other the three roles of the three other girls." Oh, okay, okay. So I my role, which had the scene with Jennifer Runyon, it was the only. You know, the girls had so little to do. It was. So it was the only standout scene, but they didn't leave it in the movie in the end. They, they shot it with the other girl with the, with the girl with the great incredible body, and it was now I can't remember, and because I'm still so internally mad, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> never got over it, no. I'm no. Kidding, but I am embarrassed that I never remember it now, but um, yeah, it's in, the, in the movie, so there's really it's, it's, <laughs> maybe they knew that. I don't know, but um, but anyway, um, I don't, I don't even remember. I, someone else remembers my character names at one of these conventions. They're like, oh, you were, I think, Lisa? I don't know, Lisa mm. and up the creek. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, I remember shooting it. I just remember my character name because it, it was, 
it was an unremarkable movie, but a lot of fun to make. And um, now the other person I wanted to ask about was uh, Don Monahan, who ended up being abducted by uh, Blaine. By what? By Blaine Novak. <laughs> oh God! Now, for, see, on that movie, the there wasn't like we would go out together, mm-hmm. but. The there wasn't the same ensemble feeling. It was it wasn't anything like nerd. Like so, I mean, I I didn't really get to know like Jeffrey Jeff East and the, these different the guys mm-hmm. very well at all. Like I got to know them a little bit, but they're not like friends, you know, like. I was sorry when the movie ended because I always hate when a movie ends. It's just I love I love working um, as an ensemble, and it just it's always fearful for me when a show is over. But and, and it was for that show too. But I I didn't have the relationship, so I don't. So with Dan, like we didn't like particularly hang out together. Okay. So it was sort of like the guys mm-hmm. kind of together, and then you know maybe Romy and I. Romy and I really got along. And um, Jennifer had her boyfriend with her, so that would, you know, just naturally mean that she was going to be with him in, in off hours. And so, so I don't, I, re, I like Dan, but I don't, I don't know him that well. You know what I mean? He, he's adorable though as an actor and stuff. He's so so charming and and cute. We could talk about stewardess school. You had a lot of <laughs> veterans in that, like Dom Mose. Oh my God, that was such a fun movie and a bad movie, but a fun, fun movie to make. Like Corinne and I became really close friends. Mm-hmm. I created um, my character that, and what was fun was it gave me a lot of freedom um, with, you know, my hand. I created my like triple, my triple, um, you know, stewardess, stewardess motion hands, you know, yep. <laughs> and and I decided she would dress in pink all the time, and everything would be pink from her nail polish to her, you know, lipstick to all, her entire outfit. Cindy Polk dressed in pink. And, like, so there was some fun freedom in that that was great. Like, they went with it, you know, they went with my ideas, and, and that was fun. Um, we, we had some camaraderie, camaraderie on that set, we shot it in town. That always makes a big difference also, of course, because people are going home to their normal homes, you know, mm-hmm. with their normal life. So you don't have that same camp feeling. Like when you go away on location and you're just with the cast, you have more of an opportunity if the, if the, if the mix of people is, is right, that you're going to form deeper, deeper friendships. But but uh, Spirit of School was a blast. I laughed so hard before seeing, like, I don't know, I, I joking, and I remember, like, the 80s are like, shh, you'll be quiet. <laughs> 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 we were just giggling and goofing around, and it was fun. It was a fun show, even though it was really, like, a, you know, campy, ridiculous script. But it was, that was a fun, that was a fun shoot. And you had Dom Mose and Sherman Hemsley in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, exactly. And, and Wendy Sperber. Wendy Jo Sperber. Yeah, she's unfortunately gone, but uh, she's yeah, very funny. So talented. Um, and Brett Cullen, you know, of course. Yeah, exactly. And um, Sandal Bergman. Sandal. And wait, who was it? Vicky? Was she played Vicky? Her name was Vicky, the kind of sergeant like stewardess. Uh, they were all, it was all really fun. Corinne and I were, were uh, definitely tight during that time period. And, uh, and um, that's, that's, that's what most of my memories are with Corinne and just laughing and <laughs> getting in trouble for laughing, you know. You- but, uh, that was a great show. Judy Landers. Like, you had a lot of people. Landers. Yeah. Yes. I used to watch her and or definitely her sister on, like, Dark Shadows or something way before 
well, well before I was ever doing, because I started on a, on a soap opera. Well, I started as a model and then a teenage model. And then right, right away they started putting me in, up for commercials. I started booking commercials like crazy and having so much fun. Then all of a sudden I had an audition for um, One Life to Live. Having never had an audition for anything other than a commercial, um, although I just school plays, but I'm talking, I was 16 years old. I did you know, school plays and stuff. And I got this soap opera and, um, you know, was on it for years. Uh, I want life to live. And so and we shot at that in New York. I don't know how I got off onto that subject, but um, I don't know how I took myself there. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a great, great place to, to start out because you have so much to do in a day. And so much is asked of you, and you somehow you do it, you pull it off, and then you're like, "Wow, I pulled that off! How did I do that?" <laughs> and then you're like, "I have no idea." Now we look at tomorrow's script. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway. Then it uh, goes uh, dark. We got to talk about Girls' Night Out because I had Retan- yes! Retania Alda was on here uh, back in February, and um, uh, she loved working with Hal Holbrook, but her opinion of the oh. movie was not huge. <laughs> But her what in the movie, her what? Her opinion of the movie was not big. Oh, yeah. You know, what's so funny. I, at one of these uh, Comic-Cons several years ago, mm-hmm. someone came up to me and said, Girls Night Out, the best horror movie ever. And I'm like, you're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. But I have had people come up to me with the... DVD, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't even know that was available. <laughs> well, you got to admit the bear, the bear with the cl- knife claws, was certainly pre Freddy Krueger. Oh it um, was certainly inventive at the time, you know. You know, who I just was talking to or just texting with was um, well, two people, Laura Summer and I from that movie. Mm-hmm. We reconnected. Mm-hmm. I don't it was just this year, and then she said, well, she had been texting or whatever. Or, somehow connected with Paul Christie, who I had, he and I had like a, 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 a like a little bit of a love affair during that movie. That <laughs> <laughs> not during, like not shooting, but in the, in the, behind the scenes. He is so funny. And he's findable if you want to interview him. He's, I mean, I, I, you know, messaged him, kind of like you're talking about. And, okay. Oh my God. He is, so funny that that movie was pretty fun to make mostly because of the people the you know, the cast and um and the and the, the directors are really fun and that was so it was also fun because my role you know i had stuff to do i was the girl who didn't cheat so i stayed alive if i had like dialogue you know i had just come from the soap opera when i was shooting that mm-hmm. so i was used to doing you know having some stuff to do and so that movie was fun i mean i thought sort of straight off the soap opera i pretty much got that and uh that was a real blast that was we, sh- we were shooting in new york which is out of new york and uh and that was a really fun fun movie <laughs> who was the guy you said was findable Best horror movie ever <laughs> <laughs> who did you say was findable because i might reach out paul christie paul christie okay one- yeah all right. And and you know he was one of the I can't remember his character name, but he was one of the the tall. They seem both called me tall comedian. He's a, he's a comedian, and he's. Uh, oh, I know who you're talking like, about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Paul Christie. And um and I can't remember his friend's name right now, but he was also a great guy. But I, I was, the crush was with Paul, so. <laughs> I remember Lauren Marie Taylor because she just came off of Friday the 13th Part 2. So. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, a, that's great. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. What were your yeah. memories of Hal Holbrook? You know, he's such a fine actor. Um, I didn't... I had no scenes with him. Um, I know his son was in the movie, and I think that's how they got David, him. Yeah. David, um, David was really dear. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen. 
pretty much any of those people in years, with the exception of Laura. Laura Stuff. And um, but th- that was a good group of girls. We enjoyed we enjoyed you know being together. And uh, Lois Robbins mm-hmm. was, was one of them, I believe. And uh, can't remember all their names, but it was a good that was a good cast. Yeah, of course, the bear costume. Who can forget that? Yeah, is probably the one that the thing that uh, people remember the most. And of course, uh, Freddy Krueger, of course, made the knife blades, uh, the glove knife blades, uh, took it to new heights. But in that movie, of course, the guy was in the bear ma- ma- mascot outfit with the the knife blades, and it was kind of a standout thing for that movie. So, right, right, exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> mascots. Yeah, they're creepy, but you don't really take them seriously. Kind of like clowns, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that it, it definitely had an eerie quality to it. Mm-hmm. With the surprise of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. That was a good one. Yeah, you had a few. For us, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you had a few minor roles that I want to mention. Uh, this film does not get very high praise, but I got to I got to bring it up. Stop or my mom will shoot. You were in that. Oh yeah, that was just yeah. That was just. Uh, I, I think I ended up with a line or something. It was some sort of a favor, and but being on the set with Stallone was mm-hmm. was um, was real, it was interesting. Like I didn't have a lot of interaction with him while I was in the scene, but. He was a total, you know, at, at the time, a, a total ladies' man, lots of action, and that was sort of amusing. And, um, um, oh, God, and the wonderful actress. Um, Joe Beth Williams? Y- yes, yeah. yes. Just amazing to be around her and watch her work. <laughs> um, so that was, yeah, that was short, but, but just an interesting experience. And, and Roger Spottis was directed, and... You know, uh, there really wasn't much, you know, to, to direct in whatever I did, but but it was just it was just cool to be around on that set. Um, were you were you there during the dream sequence? No. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of that scene? Gosh, uh, I don't remember it right now. I didn't. I don't remember it. You'll have to cut this out because that's embarrassing. <laughs> No, the one where he's uh, um, he's dreaming and they and they um, and they're solving some kind of heist or something. And he comes out there and uh, and um, Estelle Getty comes out there with a package of huggies and and uh, Joe Beth Williams offers to change him and all that stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that was kind yeah. of a daring move for Stallone. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, yeah. of course, you were in the Kindred, going a little darker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh boy, that was you know, that was a lot of goo. It was a lot of, of monster goo or whatever that we had to deal with on that movie. <laughs> I haven't seen the Kindred, so tell me about your experience, uh, the goo and all that stuff. It's just messy. <laughs> It's kind of like in an Evil Dead way. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's just like it kind of makes you helps you get into the the screaming and stuff, you know, because you're just it's just so gross. Um, <laughs> like I've forgotten they must have had a shower that we went to after. Ugh, it was just being drenched with that stuff, but um, it made it easier to scream and things. <laughs> <You know? laughs> let me let me give you a good horror, you know, horror movie scream. First, put some goo on me or some slime. That'll help. And, but, um, yeah, yeah, that was one of the problems with that movie, <laughs> other than the, in addition to the script, was that we had two directors, two very nice guys. But I think it's hard to have two directors. Yeah. You know, and that's usually not, I, I don't think. Um, anyway, I don't think. But, you know, lovely guys, lovely. We had a great great time and they were they were wonderful to work with so no um you know nothing but good memories there okay what about savage justice (laughs) that i just i amazed myself because well you know 
I had never done any martial art fighting. And so even though they, of course, sped up those scenes in the movie, they literally sped up the entire movie. I was just laughing about that the other day with a very old friend because we had T-shirts or they had T-shirts made and I had given one to her like, here, <laughs> have a savage justice shirt or whatever. And so... Um, that was an amazing feat, though, because we're in the Philippines, which is really interesting to be working and, you know, living with the, 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 these people um, at the culture that I really, you know, is a very different culture than ours. So it's very exciting that way to figure out how things work in a different country as far as how you communicate. Like, I, I didn't realize it, but they had, they had given me, like, a bodyguard, and he would always be so close to me so close like right next to me all the time and i wasn't really used to that i'd never had a bodyguard and at one point i was so sort of quietly frustrated and i in some way very nicely i I thought tried to ask him if i could in some way have a little a little bit more space and his face like fell like he was ashamed suddenly and didn't know how else to ask him to that than other the way I did. So, but then I went back to the hotel room, or, uh, which they put me in a lovely hotel in uh, Manila, and I happened to be sitting at the pool, uh, and there it was like an American. So he, it was a gentleman. He and I started talking. He ended up being a, a some kind of a therapist. He was there to on work. And he gave me this book that changed my entire experience in the Philippines, which is called Culture Shock. And they had it for different countries, but he just handed me a copy. He said, this, take a look at this. It might help you. And I learned that you never say certain kinds of things directly to a person, to a Filipino person, that you, certain kinds of messages or whatever you give, you tell another person and then they tell the person which is so completely unlike you know kind of what we do in america or certainly what we we think we do where we're supposedly being direct and that kind of thing that i'd hurt his feelings my my bodyguard he's also my driver and i was like no maybe he wasn't my driver he's just my bodyguard but anyway it felt horrible but this book changed my whole experience because now i understood if i needed to tell him something that might possibly be sensitive for him, I should tell, you know, this is like the production manager and say, you know, would you tell so-and-so that I just need a little bit more, like, just a little bit, like, a, six more inches of space? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But that was um, incredible in that way, and also just that I could learn these fights from a Filipino um, fight director who, who did not speak English, and I certainly didn't speak Filipino, but he was able to teach me these things, and even though, of course, they sped it up like crazy, I, you know, it was, it was a feat for me. I'd never done that, and so it was exciting. And just to be with all the all the gorgeous people of that country, the the children, and uh, you know, they they would the, just the general the, the population would, you know, when they'd see you shooting, of course, they'd be interested. But they also just to see a blonde was very unusual for them. So they would look at you sort of like you were like an angel or something. They, and so I have this, these wonderful pictures of me with the, with the kids that weren't in the movie. They're just hanging around and like the most gorgeous faces that Filipino people are so beautiful. So it was an incredible experience. <laughs> so you didn't have a nerd bodyguard? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I didn't. No. What about uh, Black, <laughs> Black Snow? Oh, wow. Jane Babler and I, yeah, we did that. And Jane and I were also on One Life to Live together way back in the day. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun when we happened to get cast for that movie. Um, Not the best script ever. I can't even believe you brought that up. (laughs) I haven't seen it, but was something that you had a more, um, a bigger role in? Yeah. Yeah, so I thought I'd bring it up for our experience ways. Yeah. Stir my brain on that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one I have listed here, of course, is Milk Money. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was fun because it was never a big part. It was exactly the size that you saw it. As far I was like the mother of um, of the lead little girl. The kids were, were 
and Melanie Griffith and Ed Harris. And being on the set with them was, um, you know, I didn't have any scenes with them, but of course I was around when they were doing a scene, waiting for my scene kind of thing. And, you know, um, uh, uh, and our director. Um, so we, you know, that was a great experience for that. And, and just when you have such a, when you have such a small, simple scene, sometimes quite hard to be small and simple like that can be the hardest because you really just need to be relaxed, super relaxed. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but it was fun. It was fun. To, I mean, you know, to be to be in a movie directed by Richard Benjamin with Melanie Griffith and, and Ed Harris was like so sweet. It was great. It was really great. Well, you've done a lot of television. I don't have them all listed here, but talk about some of your best television experiences. Um, well, Columbo was incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, people bring up that at comic cons as well. Um, I worked with Lindsay Krause and, um, uh, gosh, it's a really wonderful director. And then of course, Peter Falk, who was one of the dearest, sweetest and most, you know, lovely actors. So present, so so interested in being being present with you you know he's he's doing you know episode after episode year after year you know but yet he, he never tires he, he's not like oh, you know i'll leave and and let someone else stand in while she does her lines to me no that's that was never peter fox he's just a doll and and such a, a cutie and a sweetheart i mean that was that was a great that was a really fun uh you know, piece to do. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think, I did Remington Steel. That was really interesting because I was supposed to be all flirty with Pierce Brosnan, and and you know his character. I didn't really know his. I didn't really know the show that well when I did it, and um, I didn't know that he was a cool, you know, kind of a cool. Like, He's James cool Bond. Kind of, <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't know he was James Bond, <laughs> but um, he didn't make it easy for me to to kind of come on to him it was like because he always played it cool and he was more he was more um reserved anyway i think as a person mm-hmm. so i didn't really love doing those scenes because i really had to like come on to him and it was sort of awkward he could have made it easier <laughs> <laughs> yeah i later saw him at a party i didn't tell him i didn't tell him i thought you know i'm not going to complain to him he is you know when an actor has all of these shows you know all of these episodes but, you know, I just think as an actor, like, oh, Angela Lansbury, I did Murder, She Wrote, and she's amazing. She would come down and rehearse with the cast of the week and go through all the scenes just like like, like you would in theater or in, in anything. She, she, her work ethic was and, and is amazing. Mm-hmm. And, and she, we bumped into each other, and she remembered me exactly who I am. It's like, Wow, she's just she's just uh, so impressive, you know. So incredibly, I mean, I had seen her when I was eight years old, and on Broadway, I'd seen her, and I now I'm now I'm in her show, and she's just incredible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to think, trying to think what else. Oh, I love doing Midnight Caller uh, with with. Um, uh, with that cast and and Mimi Leader, the director, mm-hmm. loved that for my for my role. I mean, I really thought it was well written, and I I think they really they really trusted me with my scenes. I liked I liked doing that show a lot up in San Francisco, mm-hmm. um, and I love San Francisco. That doesn't hurt. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. And I mean, I did Cheers, and you know, of course, Truth Light. From Cheers, I'm uh, not from Cheers. It's from uh, that was um, I did that show too. I did Cheers, but then I did what I was talking about was um, Choose Flight and oh, Who's the Boss? Who's the Boss? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that was a fun show, and Judith and I worked together on One Life to Live, and my scenes were pretty much with Tony, who was adorable and funny, and um, so that was a, that was a fun show, and you know, doing a sitcom where it was live, that was like whoa, <laughs> you know, that was just. This is so rare that you work on anything live these days, unless it's a theater piece or a play, which I haven't done in eons. But 
so there was that and then um oh gosh i don't remember the other one i was just about to mention but um you know these are all like great really really fun experiences uh i tend to like the shows you know the the shows well it's all in the cast and then Mm -hmm. you know um i mean even one life to live was a fantastic experience and i met my my best friend of life on that show and we're still friends to this day Bryn thayer and uh so so i'd have to say that was also you know in a daytime sense but one but a great a great experience all the way around just as an actor to be able to pull that off is uh is exciting you mentioned the convention scene uh, from time to time here. There's something I, I like to ask my guests, because uh, I love doing the conventions. What's the most uh, unique thing you've ever been asked to sign? Um, I was asked to sign a leather jacket. I was asked to sign a guitar. That was fun, because I was like, you know, like it was from, um, as if it would have been from the... Um, carnival scene with the nerds I guess that's where the guitar so that was kind of cool and and also you get really nervous when you're signing these things that are literally a one one piece there's no there's no like second one in case you mess up <laughs> yeah really you know uh yeah they brought some cool things to sign to sign at times sometimes you know someone wants you to sign their their shirt or their you know your bicep or something <laughs> you know so, so it's always entertaining to see what's coming next i hear a lot of the times when people have uh their skin signed and then they'll go off and get the signature tattooed on themselves oh my god wow wow that's commitment <laughs> i i've never done that i don't do the tattoo thing but <laughs> right exactly yeah yeah well, I was wondering, do you have any charities that you're involved in that you want to plug on here? Um, you know, I don't have that I'm thinking of specifically. I kind of move around and do different things. Um, so I don't have that. I do have a, um, a another uh, a different kind of convention coming up. My next one is... It's called um, 80s in the in the Desert. I had done 80s in the Sand in the Dominican Republic over in the fall, and mm-hmm. then uh, I was asked to come to Las Vegas. Um, I, I believe it's, it's the Friday and Saturday, the first Friday and Saturday of May, in Las Vegas for for um, 80s in the Desert, and it's Brian Tochi and I will be there. So that's going to be, I think, a lot of fun. And um, Brian knows. Brian Tochi knows Las Vegas like the back of his hand, so we're going to have some fun up there too on either side of the of the work. But um, uh, those are the two that I know about right now that are coming up next, and then we've got we've got a few other things, but they're not set in stone yet. So okay, I just look forward to the next time I can see my cast members and uh, you know have fun at the same time. It's just it's just great, and 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 you know to meet the fans. I mean they're so they're so wonderful and they 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 remind you of shows you've forgotten you've done and they know your character name and it's like oh (laughs) that's right you know so anyway it's just been it's been a great uh, it's they're they're really these appearances are 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 very enlightening and and very sweet in a way to have the you know that your fans come up and and be so excited and want to talk about things and so it's it's uh, it's nice to do them. I enjoy them a lot. Do you have a web page you want to plug on here? You know, I don't. I have to work on my Instagram. I have a, a Instagram called the real the real Betty Child. Okay. And I've got to get going on it. Like I've got to like post that I'm going to be here and there, and uh, you know, I have to get a little bit more into the social media aspect just for the fans, so that. If, if they're curious, they'll know, and, you know, maybe they're already in town or whatever, or they're reason to go. So um, I do I do need to to get myself, uh, pinch myself and get myself going on that just for, for everyone's benefit. But, uh, but yeah. And uh, we get to celebrate 35 years of Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> crazy, crazy fun. I... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what the number is 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 so big. I, I don't. It's hard to imagine that it really was 35 years ago. It, in many ways, it really does feel like yesterday. But but uh, it's so good to be still celebrating it. So thank you for for, for spending this time with me and. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to talk about all these different projects and these different folks that we've, you know, we both know and and uh, have connected with. Yes. Before I let you go, do you mind very much if uh, I get you to do a plug for my show? Yeah, it's fine. I'm Julia Montgomery from Betty. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Julia Montgomery, Betty Childs from Revenge of the Nerds. You're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise for New Brunswick, Canada. And we're celebrating 35 years of nerds, Betty Childs, Ogre, and Booger. <laughs> and Booger. <laughs> and Booger. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's so funny. Well, we got to let Julia Montgomery go because she's got to work on her nerd laugh. <laughs> exactly. Julia, thank you so much for uh, allowing me the honor of interviewing you. It was, it was so awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. You have a great weekend, and thanks for calling me on this. No problem. You take care and have a, a nerd day. <laughs>